Another thing that you can do with planes is to just sort of bend them. There's an exercise where you can kind of crease planes as if it's a piece of paper that's folding. But this one, what you want to do is pretend that they're um, made out of like sheet metal and you can't crease them very well, so you have to so you have to fold them. So what you can do is start with a with a like creased plane and then round out the corners. Once you get comfortable with that, you can begin rounding out the corners directly and that'll be plenty easy for you. Um, if you've done all the other plane exercises, like you've tried creased planes and you've tried flat planes, you should be pretty comfortable just jumping right into this. Um, and what you want to do is, is just vary this idea as much as possible. I think one of the toughest ones is this sort of shallow, slight bend, because you want the plane to go straight, arc just a hair, and then go straight again. The difference between this and doing like an arced plane is that, relatively speaking, these bends happen quickly and in a small part of the plane. So this is going to be um, applicable to a bunch of stuff with corporate curves, a lot of modern furniture, architecture, and things like that. You'll be able to draw um, like semi-organic objects, basically. You know, if you have really tightly groomed um, hedges or something like that, this could apply to that as well. It'll be really useful for cars, things like that. So here you can see that I've faintly laid out a bunch of different, um, a, diff a bunch of different planes, and I'm just kind of going on top of them. So one of the coolest tricks for this is uh, when you're sketching for yourself, uh, is the 10% cool gray, um, either marker or pencil, and the neat thing about it is that it just totally disappears. You know, you can barely see it on the video, which is why I didn't include me using that. Um, so, but for yourself, when you're sketching, when you're planning stuff, you know, that's a that's a trick to make sure your initial lines don't get too heavy. That's one of the biggest problems when you're starting to draw is that your searching lines get really, really heavy, and then you just go on top of them thicker and thicker, and everything just kind of gets muddy and gross. And you don't want to have that happen. Now be sure that when you do these kinds of exercises that you experiment with, you know, different lengths of, of arcs, like make sure the bend, you try bends that happen really quickly. Uh, make sure you try ones that happen very slowly. And use the variety of what of what's possible. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm taking arcs that kind of float in space and then others that sit on the ground a little more. And anytime you you come up with more variations and try different things that, that you think may or may not work, you're increasing your versatility. And that's really good, especially when you're beginning, uh, because you just want to explore possibilities and not get too bored with it. Um, this one would could would be really useful if you're drawing, you know, any kind of building or um, anything anything that that changes direction unexpectedly. Um, for instance, like you know, San Francisco City Street goes flat and then goes up dramatically. Um, the other thing that you want to do is just take your rectangular planes and round out the corners. Um, so these are basically flat plane exercises but you're rounding out the corners of that plane. And this will apply to doing, you know, any kind of rounded form, like, um, say you're drawing dice and the corners are rounded, you know, each plane of the, of the die will look more or less like one of these. And it's going to be good for drawing anything in the contemporary world where the, the, cor the corporate curve is so popular, you know, Apple does that all the time in their graphic design. So if you're a graphic designer, um, you know, user experience designer or headed that direction, this is something that I would get very um, comfortable drawing. And the trick to this is not to lose the essence of the squared off plane, but to emphasize the rounded corner. And again, try sharply rounded and softly rounded corners going back and forward in, in different directions in space. And 
try out everything that you can come up with and have a lot of fun and have a lot of fun trying it. You know, use every tool that you can, use line weight, use a little bit of perspective. And remember that all that the basics of planes is um, just using triangles and and paralleling lines when appropriate.